it's not gonna come undone it's nicely finished beautifully done um i'm not even sure now looking at all the pieces i'm not even sure if i'm gonna have enough for everything it's a beautiful light cotton uh, curtain from ikea i seem to thrift a lot of those things and they're perfectly fine and the beauty is a beautiful beautiful fabric i have the pieces now this is one of the sleeves So I think I've been teasing you this fabric for a couple of uh, videos now. I made this, uh, I explained it in one of the videos, but if you haven't watched it, I made these cushion covers. I opened them up now, but they were cushion covers. I made them as one of my very first projects I've ever sewn. Don't be scared, this is the back. Okay, granted, granted, I have washed it many times. And that granted, it, the fabrics have gone really supple because of that. So, but come on, there's no excuse for this. I'm gonna unpick it from here. I'm trying to fix all these seams with the overlocker. I mean, to be perfectly honest, I didn't have an overlocker then, so I did my best. And we used them for a long time. I th I see if I can find a picture of the apartment in London, and uh, I'll put the picture of them. If I can find that, I will definitely put it in the video. Look at this. They were well loved. <laughs> I started to iron them and I thought, oh my god, there's no way I can, in good conscience, know that this is behind what I'm making. So basically, what I'm gonna do is give it a lot more strength by overlocking all the seams. So I know it won't come undone because it cannot have to be strong for what I'm making. I think that was the right call. Um, I started fixing them. Um, you may ask, why do I have a pink thread going on in there? I actually took the grey one from there, so now I have three greys and one pink. And um, the reason why is because I did say it in one previous video, I am just so obnoxious and I quite like having the pink on the grey. No reason, I just like it, so it is what it is. Right, so what I'm doing is remaking the panel again, so that was one original one but the truth is now like this it's not gonna come undone it's nicely finished beautifully done so I want it to be strong um, so it, it has to be done I'm gonna be carry on it's taking me longer than I wanted to be honest I'm kind of behind my project but it is what it is I much rather get it done properly look at all the pieces that still need to iron and fix yeah let me make myself a coffee and uh, carry on with this. I love it though. I love the patchwork. I loved it originally and I still love it. Look at that one. This one is ironed, waiting for me to fix again. And the builders, the builders. Did I tell you I'm making a quilted jacket? I just wanted to show you how I am uh, fixing one of my jumper sweaters to do the jacket so this is the original it was a very very open neck can you see the original neckline that's the original neckline for the front so what I've done is I put both patterns together on the original shoulder that was the original shoulder and that was the original neckline this is the back and that and that is the front so I extended the shoulder and then I did a um, smaller neckline to the back and then the front did the same. I extended the, the shoulder to the same size as the back and then I've done this new na um, neckline. Um, I'm going to try how it, how it feels. If I need to do any other adjustments, I just do them after that. So these are the pieces. Um, all of them searched and nice so I doubt yeah all of them nicely searched so I doubt that they will ever come out at all now so some of them I haven't put together because I need to obviously patchwork to do the jacket so anyway I have made some of uh, remade some of the panels again look at that isn't that nice and neat I mean I know an overlocker is an expensive buy but if you are really sewing a lot and you're making your own stuff, it's definitely a good investment. Because, I mean, you saw the mess that it was. 
this is the original hem from the jeans so i left it as such but you know you saw the mess that it was but now like this is so much better and uh, i have my pieces nice and ironed and remade some pieces and i left some others without just to patch it up as i go along for the pieces that i might need so yeah these are the pieces there you go nice and neat yeah so let me do some lunch and i'll come back to it okay so i have started putting panels together to make um to be able to take like the front the back and everything and uh, i think um it's not wide enough to do the back so i'm gonna have to stitch this one here and then cutting half a little bit and stitch it down here to make a long enough panel for the back um i'm not even sure now looking at all the pieces i'm not even sure if i'm gonna have enough for everything so i don't think i have enough of the panels i'm gonna have to get a piece of denim and um, maybe make the part of the back and part of the front with the one piece of denim yeah I, I, it's not enough okay let's see so yes this is a tablecloth uh, that i have thrifted and it's 100 percent cotton and uh, it has a lovely um feel to it and i think it looks fantastic with my panels as you can see i mean it has a label but it is actually brand new i i got a whole bunch i'll show you one day so anyway i think that's a perfect la uh, fabric for this i'm gonna add it to this panel here and then i'm gonna make bigger enough panels and then add a pieces of this for the front panel and hopefully that's gonna be enough for the jacket so let's see controversially I am making it a little bit smaller than my size and I'm doing that on purpose because I'm a little selfish person and every time I make something I want to keep it for myself. So my wardrobe is getting fat which is good but um, my slow fashion brand is very thin at the moment. So this is a project that I had in my mind for the longest time and I'm going to be making the first jacket with these uh, cutoffs that I show you. I also show you this uh, cloth, but the works are still going and um, I don't know how much I was able to talk. Anyway, I'll show you quickly. This is um, a tablecloth, a table runner actually, it's not very wide. It's 100% cotton and it has a lovely uh, dye to it. Beautiful, it's cotton. So it goes beautifully with this fabric and uh, it goes beautifully with almost all the panels that I've been making. Um, so because I show you, I don't know if I show you, this panel happens to be uh, not wide enough to do the whole bag in one go. So I'm going to be adding a piece of this and then um, I'll carry on doing my patchwork. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this piece here. I mean, I know it has a label, but it was from the thrift store, I promise. Uh, it's brand new from the thrift store because I think it was a shop that went down or whatever. Good news for me, bad news for the shop, of course. So the idea is to add it to the side, cut my panel, and then whatever I have left, add it again to the other panels to make the front and probably the sleeves because I don't think I have enough. I also, I show you, uh, this is the fabric. This is the tiniest bit, uh, one little scrap because I already cut uh, the fabric that I've got for the lining of the jacket, which is also thrifted. It's a beautiful light cotton uh, curtain from Ikea. I seem to thrift a lot of those things and they're perfectly fine and the beauty is a beautiful beautiful fabric i have enough of that fabric of this curtain oh i have uh, the sleeve here i'll show you oh, it's starting again it's starting again oh, i'll catch you in a bit all i wanted to say is that i have enough of this fabric to 
hopefully quilt it again and have it as an outside for a jacket and I might even make it for myself my size um, I also hack this uh, sleeve pattern I hack the whole thing I show you um, I don't know if I started recording whenever this works going on I don't know I don't record things in normal sequence so I don't know how much I've recorded of everything but anyway I have cut the lining I'm gonna prepare this fabric with this to cut the rest of their things and I catch you on the quilting because um, through to form I'm gonna do whatever I want I don't know I'm not gonna follow any quilting guides or anything I'm just gonna do my thing so I catch you there to see what we're doing oh I wanted to say I made this uh, top out of a man's shirt and uh, uh, my own pair of old trousers I made a video um, in here in the channel. I'm not just promoting the, the channel. What I wanted to say is that I have worn this top loads of loads of times. Let me see if I can show you. But one thing I, I must say is when you make your own clothes, you kind of, as you try them on, you kind of fit it to your own body. And um, I happens to have fairly small shoulders compared to my bust. So my armholes are actually quite, um, it has to be quite narrow here. And they come in quite short for a normal pattern. I have to really always manipulate that. And then the sleeves are from the original shirt. But because I've done that, it is absolutely, I've been working here all day and it's super comfortable, even though it's a, a button up. I've got threads all over the place just to prove the point. <laughs> so anyway, whenever you make your own things, whether it's sewing from scratch or upcycling, you get like a better fit clothing for yourself. It feels comfortable. It feels comfortable and it feels lovely. So anyway, I, let me crack on with this and I'll catch you back. These are the shenanigans I'm getting to get uh, some fabric to make the sleeve so I'm thinking I'm gonna be putting this plain fabric on the top of the sleeve because it's obviously going to be quilted so the less you know bulk I have around the seam of the armhole the better and um, this is a pattern that I have for the very voluminous um, sleeve and obviously I'm folding those to be able to get like a straight arm I already cut the back and the front. I only have to take my two sleeves now, so I'm gonna have to piece whatever scraps I have left with this piece, which is also not enough. I'll show you all the pieces in a minute, but yeah, it's not a lot. So I'm piecing and I'm thinking I'm gonna put both tops of the sleeves with this because I think it will make it much nicer seam for the armhole. Okay, so I'm using my now cut sleeve to cut the other sleeve. This is all the pieces that I put together. This is one of my sleeves. I absolutely love it. Love it. And now I'm just going to put it... It's difficult to do this with one hand. Right, now I'm going to put it like that. Well, straight. You know what I mean. I'm going to put it straight and I'm going to cut the second one. I <laughs> just wanted to show you what is left. I don't think I even have enough for pockets. So pockets might, might be able to come out of this bit and this bit. That's all I have left. Literally, that's all I have left. I have my bag sandwiched with the batting and the lining fabric and... Uh, yeah, that's the first one I'm going to be quilting. When I have it all quilted, I'll show you the pieces. I'm just going to be doing some lines, uh, probably with blue. I don't particularly want to see the quilting all that much. Um, but then again, I mean, if I go around here in blue, you'll see it. Um, I'm not going to be too precious about it. I have the pieces now. This is one of the sleeves. And... The other sleeve. I love the fact that I use this fabric for the top for both sleeves. And they're obviously not the same. Um, that's the backing. 
It's a lovely cutting. It feels really, really nice. I can't wait to get it done. Um, but yeah, uh, that's the bag. Look at the bag. Isn't it lovely? That's the bag. For the bag, for the lining for the bag. I just got one big square um, to be able to just do the quilting without problems. <laughs> it's all piled up in here. It's so uh, bulky. I hope when I get it all done, it's going to be comfortable to wear. That's why I didn't do a drop shoulder. I did a normal wrangling. I'm hoping I'm right. We shall see. I'm actually, I'm so tired because I've been standing up for most part of the day. Look at this. This one has the blue at the bottom. So that's the pile. That's my pile for the jacket. I think I might take a picture for Instagram because it's quite an interesting um, setup like this, all sandwiched and ready to go. It's kind of getting on in the evening, but I really want to at least try to do some of the quilting because there's so much preparation, so many hours of preparation. Now I'm finally quilting and putting it together. So I'm really quite excited. I've quilted and searched the front the two front parts and the back and they feel quite stiff obviously it's all because of the batting but the thing is I um, you know as you quilt you keep on moving and it's uneven at the bottom so I'm going to have to make it a little bit smaller I think I'll see I'll see how I do it but yeah I um, finished it nicely because I think it'll be easier to deal with them with them all stitched um, so I'm going to iron it as it is, each piece, and then I'm going to stitch it to see what it looks like, and then do the sleeves. Yeah, that's the body. I love the lining. I wish I had more of this fabric because it's absolutely super soft and gorgeous. I only have one panel. I wish I had more. Such a beautiful fabric. It really is. Anyway, let me finish it see how it looks when it's done and this uh the first sleeve um quilted and um overlooked i'm gonna give it a good iron again because uh, it gets all kind of like that uh, hopefully when i give it a good iron i put a pin in here because this is the front part when i give it a good iron um hopefully it won't be so stiff maybe it gets a little bit more mobile maybe when i wash it i don't know I'm really happy with them. Um, I think it looks fantastic. I'm trying to do this as quickly as possible because uh, the works is still going and any time now they're gonna shut me up again. Anyway, this is where I am at the moment. Ta -da! I have attached this leaf. I'm gonna say one thing that if it's not obvious, the jacket is absolutely gorgeous. I love the textile. I love what I've made with it. I uh, still need to fix this. I think I mentioned it to you. I'm going to make it a little bit better that way. Anyway, the, the sleeve is set. This sleeve is set. I have the other sleeve here. It is quite a job to put it together. It's quite stiff. Um, I think I've got the wrong backing on all together. I tried then it's a little bit too tight on me, which is not a bad thing <laughs> because I keep on trying to get everything that I make just goes it straight into my wardrobe and I'm thinking no, no no I need to start creating pieces that I want to do as part of my slow fashion and uh, I don't have discipline I saw it I like it I want to keep it so this one I saw it I absolutely love it but it's too small so that's the trick um doing so it won't fit me this is how I need to put the you can see the armhole here I just need to stitch it all I'm going to do is just holding them together like that and then take the jacket off. I'm just going to stitch it together. But I want to show you how I finished it so far. Um, it's all searched with the lining and then just this, uh, the seams um, flat, iron flat open. 
I think I'm gonna finish the jacket, finish the neckline, and trying to do like a really cool bias tape all around the opening, and hopefully the sleeves and the bottom, and then see if I have um, any fabric whatsoever to make like some patch pockets. I am very excited because it's quite a beautiful textile, but I am a little bit disappointed that I got the wrong backing. Um, I mean, it's been quite a few hours working on this, but it is a process. I'm building my items. I'm building what I'm, I'm going to be offering. And I think what I'm offering is the cool textile and a nice finish on items. So let me finish it and see what it looks like. Second sleeve set in. I am going to be doing this on the neckline, more or less. I'm just going to um, come from zero in this curve like that and the same here and then I'm going to find them a, a nice bias tape for the side I think for this leaf I might just fold it and stitch it down because I think it will look better just fold it I mean it's already fixed like that I might just do that this is gonna be one of those videos that I don't finish the item um, that I wanted to finish now, I think I made a mistake on the backing. I used like a quilting backing that is smaller and it was too fat, so I ironed it down and I think that's a massive mistake. I, I'm not 100% sure what to go from here. Um, I tried it on, it's too tight on me, which was by design. And now I regret it. Um, I absolutely love, I have put them um, a little bit of uh, this bias tape. It's in the, in the tube. It has too much body, it is too stiff, um, but the textile is so gorgeous. I kind of feel bad that I don't know what to do from here. Another thing I was thinking of doing is to do it like a crop top, a crop jacket, like that. And then maybe put some uh, buttons, I think it might look better. As a crop jacket because it has quite a bit of a body I absolutely love the the textile um, but you can see it's quite stiff and, and I'm, I'm a bit gutted I'm gonna have to admit I'm gonna have to leave it here because um, on my to-do list I have a, a whole bunch of things to do for the website and I need to crack on with that so what do you think I absolutely love the jacket. I think it's gorgeous. Love it. Love the the everything. Uh, the patchwork is on point. I I mean, <laughs> my old self did the patchwork and I just added the pieces you saw me. Um, but even the pieces, they look fantastic. <sighs> I generally, generally love the jacket, but I don't know. I want to start... Um, releasing some of these jackets on the website and until I'm happy with the design I don't know if I will be putting them I think I'm gonna have to um, try again to do this with a different backing and uh, maybe manipulate the pattern again maybe instead of doing like a tailored type of jacket like this maybe do um I was trying to run away from the you know the drop shoulder but that was definitely going to be a lot easier for me uh, do i love the jacket absolutely it's just so beautiful with the the cotton backing um it's just too stiff and because i can't try it on it's too tight i'm not 100 percent sure how to follow from here i i would say more than a, a fashion designer at all i would say i'm a textile designer i love making the textile and i love making the items i just i'm spinning spinning i've been spinning for a couple of hours and i think i'm gonna stop spinning and getting on doing something a little bit more productive or shall i um shall i reduce the size because I did the leg in overlap I'm still thinking about it <laughs> I say I'm gonna move along and I'm still thinking about this I just took the bias tape and I'm wondering shall I just reduce the size that was 
and then maybe do a um, like a, a bit more tailored um, I mean not folded but you know what I mean put like a tailored piece and uh, come in like that do it more of a tailored style instead of just a bias tape um, and not make it so uh, overlocked it was meant to be more like a wintery jacket um, but yeah <laughs> I said I was gonna leave it and I'm still thinking about it it's a bit too stiff um, it is gorgeous though so you guys always been so good at giving advice any advice is more than welcome I'm gonna pack it up because uh, I'm not being productive. I've just been going forwards and backwards on it. I'm very happy with what I've arrived, but I generally don't know how to carry on. <laughs> so any ideas on how to finish the jacket, um, it would be very appreciated. I, I actually think it's absolutely gorgeous. So I'm very happy with the patchwork and with the jacket. I'm gonna try a different silhouette on to the next one. It's our set.